today we start our discussion on the uh, fourier series okay we have only already learned the fourier series in the lower classes the definition we already know f of x equal to a0 plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x b n sigma n equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x okay so what it means is any complex periodic piece wise continuous function okay piece wise continuous function may be expressed as a series of sines and cosines in the form as uh, given here so f of x is uh, some complex periodic piece wise continuous function it can be expressed as a some uh, series of sines and cosines or we say infinite sum, uh, sum of sines and uh, cosines okay so here we have sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x so we are taking infinite sum here sigma n equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x we are taking infinite sum of the um, sin n x where n takes integral values so this is uh, the fourier series or the fourier theorem theorem put forward by the fourier any function can be expressed as an infinite sum of sines and cosines now what is meant by the piece wise continuous function an example is shown here this is a piece wise continuous function you see it is continuous here but a discontinuity appears here why it is discontinuous here it has two values at this point at this value of x it can take either this value or this value so we say it is discontinuous it is discontinuous here also it can take two values okay and uh, it is discontinuous only at these two points and at other points it is continuous so we say it is piece wise continuous or sectionally continuous okay and um, mathematically uh, a function is said to be piece wise continuous if it satisfies two conditions which are called dirichlet conditions dirichlet conditions what are those dirichlet conditions the function has finite number of maxima and minima okay the period that we consider the function must have only finite number of maxima and minima also the function must have a finite number of discontinuities okay the discontinuities uh, must be finite okay in this example we have two discontinuities in the period it is repeating this is periodic it's repeating the same shape or pattern and in between these two points uh, we have only two discontinuities so finite maxima and minima and only finite discontinuities in the, in a period of one oscillation okay and these two conditions are sufficient but not uh, necessary okay these conditions are sufficient two conditions for you know uh, telling f of x is a uh, what piece wise continuous and the physical idea of the uh, fourier theorem is suppose we have a function a square wave we told it is uh, you know a periodic one it is piece wise continuous you can express it as an infinite sum of sines and cosines 
So that is shown here. We, have, we see a sine wave here. We see uh, another sine wave here. Many sine waves here. Okay. And when you add, actually there are infinite number of sines and cosines. And if you add all those waves, you will be getting the square wave. This is actually the physical meaning. Or um, by analyzing a function through Fourier series, you can know various components all of the sines and cosines uh, the function contains. So uh, this is the uh, physical meaning of this. Okay. Now, the sin nx and cos nx, they are periodic with the period 2 pi, you know, sin nx, cos nx uh, for integral n are periodic. Therefore, the function is periodic with period 2 pi in the interval minus pi to pi, okay, minus pi to pi, okay. Because uh, we are writing uh, the function, it's combination of sin nx and cos nx, it's periodic, so the function f of x will be periodic. Right. Now, uh, let's see the evaluation of the coefficients of the Fourier series. The coefficients are a0, an, bn. Okay, these are the coefficients. We have the equation 1, equation 1 is this, f of x written in this form, first coefficient a0, then we have an for n equal to 1 to infinity, then we have bn for n equal to 1 to infinity. Uh, okay, so uh, we are evaluating a0, an and bn now using the orthogonal property of the sine and cosine functions. Okay, using the orthogonal property of the sine and cosine function. What is this orthogonal property? See, sine and mx cos nx dx that is equal to 0. For any value of m and n, integral minus pi to pi sin mx cos nx dx. So, if you are taking sin product of sin and cos Integrate, integrating in the interval minus pi to pi, you will be getting 0. So, this is the orthogonality relation. The second one is, suppose you are taking the product of two sine functions or two cos functions. Okay, product of two sine functions and cos functions. So, sin mx sin nx, cos mx cos nx. What do you get? Pi delta mn. Okay, so n, m and n are different. If m and n are different, so suppose you are taking sin 5x into sin 3x dx, you know, 5 and 3, it's different, you will be getting 0. But if you are get, having the same value, sin 5x into sin 5x dx, you will be getting pi. Same rule applies to cosine function as well. So this is the, so we are going to use this uh, orthogonality uh, relation Okay, we are using this orthogonality uh, relation. Okay. Now, A0, we are evaluating. What we do is we multiply, so oh, sorry, uh, we integrate equation 1. Equation 1 is our original equation. This equation, this is equation 1. Okay. We just multiply this or, or just integrate this between the limit minus pi to plus pi. So we have minus pi to plus pi f of x dx here. So here we, we also a0 has to be integrated, this has to be integrated, this has to be integrated, right hand side has to be integrated. So this is what we do here. And uh, we have this minus pi, integral minus pi to pi f of x dx as equal to a0 integral minus pi to pi dx and then we have sigma n equal to 1 to infinity okay minus pi to pi cos nx dx here we have an here that is missing bn is here 
minus pi 2 pi cos n x dx. Anyway, this is 0. Okay. Uh, this is 0. As you integrate this, this will be 0. Okay. We, this is, this is uh, sorry, this is sin n x. Sorry, this is sin n x. And integral minus, minus pi 2 pi sin n x dx is 0. Cos n x dx is 0. So this will be 0. So we will be left with only this term. So that is shown here. Yeah. As you integrate this and apply the limits, you will get 2 pi here. So 2 pi a0 is 0, 0. So a0 is uh, 1 by 2 pi um, uh, integral minus pi 2 pi f of x dx. So this is a0. Now uh, let's evaluate a n. So for that, we multiply both sides by cos mx. Both sides of equation 1 that is multiplied by cos mx and uh, we integrate between the limits minus pi to pi. So as we multiply and integrate on the left hand side we will get this, on the right hand side we have this and uh, uh, the, these three terms will be there. This term as you integrate you will be getting 0 and um, uh, this is uh, 0. So you will be left with, uh, um, you have this sigma n equal to 1 to infinity here. For when n equal to m, when n equal to m you will, you will have pi here. For all other values it will be 0. So uh, this is, uh, what do you get is uh, 0 plus this plus 0. So am that will be equal to from this we can write am as this 1 by pi integral minus pi to pi f of x cos m x dx. And uh, when you replace m by n instead of m if you give n you will have an an equal to 1 by pi integral minus pi to pi f of x cos m x dx. So we have the equation for the coefficient a. Now for uh, finding the equation for bn, the coefficient bn, again we are multiplying equation 1, both sides are multiplied by sin mx and integrate between these limits. So we have integral minus pi 2 plus pi for f x sin mx dx as equal to a0 integral minus pi 2 pi sin mx uh, dx. All other terms will be 0. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, a0 sin mx dx and then we have this uh, sigma a, a n um, cos nx sin mx b n sin nx sin mx. And in this case, uh, uh, we know this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 because we have cos sin, so that is 0 and only this. And here when n equal to m, you will have pi here for all other values, it is 0. So uh, we have this uh, equation on the left hand side, we have this minus integral minus pi to pi f of x sin mx dx is equal to bm pi, uh, sorry bn pi, this is actually uh, sbm pi. Uh, and bm equal to 1 by pi this my integral minus pi to pi f of x sin m x dx. For uh, m we are giving n so we have bn as equal to 1 by pi integral minus pi to pi f of x sin n x dx. So we have the values for a n sorry a0 a n and uh, bn. So we summarize the results. We uh, have according to the Fourier theorem for any piecewise continuous function f of x, we have a0 sigma n equal to 1 to infinity i n cos n x b n sin n x. The value of a0 is this 1 by 2 pi. Okay, 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi 2 pi f of x dx. a n is equal to this 1 by pi integral minus pi 2 pi f of x cos n x dx and b n is this 1 by pi uh, integral minus pi 2 pi. 
uh, f of x sin and x dx. So a0 is this. In some uh, books we follow this definition f of x is equal to a0 by 2 remaining terms are same. So we, we are choosing a0 by 2 and if it is a0 by 2 a0 as you evaluate will be this 1 by pi integral minus pi to pi f of x dx. It will not be 1 by 2 pi. Okay, so uh, you, you will have uniformly for all these integrals uh, you will have 1 by pi here. Okay, so if you are taking a0 by 2 everywhere here the coefficient of the integral will be 1 by pi. But for the time being we are using this definition, we are using a0 here not a0 by 2. So you will have 1 by 2 pi here and 1 by pi at uh, the other integrals. Case 1, if f of x is an even function of x, okay, suppose that f of x is an even function of x, that means f of minus x is equal to f of x for an even function, this is the property and a0, a0 by definition it is this. Since f of x is even, I can write uh, this integral as 2 times this. This 2 will get cancelled, 1 by pi integral 0 to pi f of x dx. And what about an? An, uh, the definition is this, and here f of x is an even function. This is an even function, so as it combines with cos and x, you will be getting even function. And since it is an even function, you can write this as 2 times integral 0 to pi f of x cos and x dx. So an will be this. And what about bn? f of x is e1. This is e1 function. This is odd function. So as it combines, you will have odd function. And so bn will be equal to 0. So uh, f of x, so bn equal to 0. So here, uh, you know, this bn, this is 0. This is 0, so you will have only these two terms. Okay. So uh, f of x is given by a0 plus u min equal to 1 to infinity and cos n x. a0 is uh, this 1 by pi. a n is uh, this 2 by pi integral 0 to pi f of x cos n x uh, dx. b n is 0. So uh, we have only a0 and a n and it can be determined by this. Case 2, f of x is an odd function of x. Since f of x is an odd function, this will be 0. And f of x odd, cos n x even, so this will be odd, so this will be 0. Then f of x uh, odd function, sin n x is an odd function, so this will be even function, so you will have 2 by pi negal 0 to pi f of x sin n x dx. So here a0 0, zero a n 0, a0 0, zero a n 0 and you have only b n. So uh, here since a0 0, zero a n 0 you will not have these terms, only this. Okay, so here uh, you will have b n as equal to, oh sorry f of x as equal to this sigma n equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x and b n is given by this 2 by pi integral 0 to pi f of x sin n x dx. So this is when the function is e1. Okay. So when, when function is e1, you know, the Fourier series is simply this. Okay. And you have to determine only b n. Okay. Sorry, function is old, old function of x. Function is e1, uh, you have this f of x, you will have to determine a0 and a n. b n only b n will be equal to 0. Okay. So if a function is odd, it is very easy to evaluate the Fourier series. You need to see or you need to find only b n. Okay.